Tea Diary 8.30 This morning you were vigorous, lashed down the throat, in great gusts of heat and flavour. You are my first confidant of the day, and each time we meet, you have a new personality, a new tinge and tone I can never predict. At eleven you were furry. The tea bag had been left too long to fatten in the cup, winced out like a dead grub with a smile on its face. We must not forget rituals, the rumble, the sigh, the stir, the clink, and ah. I can still feel your dry texture advancing across the velvet walls of my mouth. Two o'clock. You were listless. I suspect the tea bag was taken too soon, an overzealous caesarean, which left me pondering that you are barely more than a flirtation of leaf and water, an interruption of milk. I winced at the thin, grey ring of your watery edge. When four o'clock came, you were rusty. I felt as if I was sucking the juice of the earth itself, up through stone and soil. Your metallic flavour lacked the calming influence of milk. You reminded me of an argument at the end of a wounded relationship. Eight o'clock. Evening saw you bloated to a kind of pale-skinned dotage, oversuckled on dairy, so I almost felt embarrassed, nearly offered a second draught to the visitor who sat there, with anxious thumbs yearning to leave. It struck me then that you are to be loved but never trusted.